and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're looking at installing fonts on both the Mac and the PC and then how you can use fonts in both Illustrator and Photoshop. Now before you can use a font in Photoshop or Illustrator you'll need to download and install it. So I'm here on the Design Cuts website. The font I'm going to be installing is this Mademoiselle script font. So you'll obviously need to locate the font that you want to install and go ahead and download it. And if you're purchasing it, you'll need to go through the purchasing process and then download the font. Typically fonts are downloaded as zip files and so you're going to find them in your downloads folder. And this is the Mademoiselle script font here on a Windows computer. I'll double click the font file that was downloaded and when I do that you'll see that there's an option for extract all files. So I'll click on that and then just click extract and Windows will go ahead and extract all the contents from that zip file. Now in this case this is a zip file that has more than just a font in it that's why it's taking a few seconds to extract. Typically if your zip file only has a font in it, it's going to extract really, really quickly. Once the files are extracted, you'll get access to your folder. So you'll just double click on that. What I'm looking for is the typeface itself. So I'll double click on that folder. You can see that I have an OTF and a TTF. These are both different types of font files. I'm just going to install a TTF. That's probably the most common way that fonts will be distributed. So to install it on a PC, I'll just double click the font name and this will show me the font and I get a little button here to install it. So I'm going to click to install it and I would go ahead and install all the fonts that I want. So there are different typefaces here in this particular package. Sometimes you'll only get one, sometimes you'll get multiple looks for a single font. And as we install each of these fonts, you get a look at what you're actually installing. Now once fonts are installed on the PC, that's all you need to do. You can use them straight away. So you can swing across to Photoshop and Illustrator and get started using them in your projects. But before we do that, let's head to the Mac and see how we would install this font on a Mac. To install fonts that you've downloaded to your Mac, you'll go to your Downloads folder or wherever you downloaded those fonts to. And if it's a zip file, you'll just double click to open up that zip file and then navigate through the folder that is extracted from the zip file. In this case, we've got the Mademoiselle font here and we've got OTF and TTF options. Well, I'm going to install the TTFs. So I'm going to open up the TTF folder and locate the fonts that I want to install. So I'll select one and then shift click on the last one. I'll right click and choose open with and choose font book. And this allows me to just click to install these fonts. And once the fonts are installed, I can go ahead and use them. So we're going to look at using fonts in both Photoshop and Illustrator. Starting here in Photoshop, I have a photograph open and this is from the 50 plus high res autumn photos by Moonloop. It's another one of our Design Cuts products. I'm going to put in the title of this flower, which is a cone flower. So I'm going to select the type tool here. Just make sure that I'm working with white because black is not going to show up on this background here. I'm going to select the font I'm using. I'm starting with the Mademoiselle Alternate and it's just regular. That's the only style of font we have here. I've got it set to 120. That might need to be changed, not sure. I'm actually going to make it left aligned because that's going to make placement a little bit easier. I'll click in the document and I get the default placeholder text, which is Laura Mipsum. That's going to disappear as soon as I start typing. Now the font Mademoiselle that I downloaded had swashes, but they are in a separate file. So I'm just going to put a placeholder, a little dash for what's going to be a swash in a minute. And then I'm going to type coneflower. And I'm going to put another dash because that's going to be another swash in a minute. Now this font, we can have a look at what's inside it and just work out what it is that we've got. And we do that by choosing window and then go to glyphs. And the glyphs panel will tell us about the currently selected font. And because we're in the middle of the word here, we're actually seeing all the characters in this Mademoiselle Alt font. Now there are capital letters obviously, and then the lowercase letters follow them. 
and then there are a series of numbers followed by some ligatures. Now ligatures are, in this case are just double letters, we don't have any in the word. And then there are some foreign characters if you're writing in another language. But down the very bottom of this font are some alternates for our lowercase letters. And so we can see how they might make our type look a little bit different. Now they're so close to the originals that I'm just going to put the two letters in side by side so you can see what we're looking at. So I'm going down to the very end of the font here and let's go and see the lowercase letter C. I'm just double clicking on it and you can see that this is the one we typed originally and this is an alternate. Well if I want the alternate I'm just going to remove the original and we could do that with other characters such as O. You can see that this alternate O is much larger than the original and so I can change it out if I want to and you can try the letter N and so we've got two letters N and you choose the one that you would most like to use. Well I'm seeming to like all the alternates and we could go through the whole of the rest of the word just looking at what the alternate characters were and we could use any of those that we wish. Now for the swashes, we're going to have to get a different font. So I'm just going to select over one of the swashes and I'm going to start typing in Mademoiselle and then I'll go to the swashes regular. And as I roll up in the glyphs panel here, we can see the swashes. Now I've lost my dash because that wasn't actually a swash character, but I can use any of these and I'm just going to double click on it to replace it and see what it looks like. So I can see that this is joining up pretty well. If I double click on this one, it's not going to join up so well. And so I can determine which of the swashes I want to use. Well, I think the one that I had selected first of all is pretty good or maybe this one. I like that one. And so we'll go back to this character too and we'll go and make sure that we're using it in the correct font. So I'm going to use the swashes. And then we can experiment with some of these swashes to see what they're going to look like in position. Well, I think I lucked out with that one. I think that looks pretty good. Now we can also adjust the spacing between these characters. I think that there's probably some spacing that could be adjusted between the R and the swash. Well, I'm going to place my cursor right between the R and the swash and I'm going to the character panel here. Now the character panel contains a option for adjusting the spacing between two characters that's called kerning and here is the kerning setting. So I could adjust this just down a little bit to see if I could get the swash position just a little bit better in terms of its placement with the letter R. So let's just try a couple of options here. Well minus 20 looks pretty good. So in Photoshop you've got the ability to obviously type into a document using the font that you've selected but you also have this glyphs panel which will give you access to what's inside the font allowing you to choose the elements you want to use and when we're talking things like swashes you're really going to need to be able to open up this glyphs panel to see what is available because otherwise it's going to be very difficult for you to determine what is available to you. To use the fonts in Illustrator, well I've got a brand new document open, I have black set as my colour, I'll go to the type tool. I've already selected my Mademoiselle font but I could just click the drop down list here and select it from the list or it might be a bit easier if you've got a lot of fonts to just start typing its name and then select it. The font size is 200 points, probably a pretty good size for this document. So I'll click in the document and type my words. Now you may notice that the two letters E are very different here. That's a ligature as soon as Illustrator sees that I've typed two letters that are the same letter side by side then it's replaced this with a ligature and that gives us a lot of variety in this type. It makes it look less like it's been typed with a typeface and more like it's been hand drawn. As we did in Photoshop we can get hold of a glyphs panel. We'll do that by choosing window and then type and then glyphs. And so the glyphs panel will also give us access to ligatures as well as our original characters and the possible alternate characters that we have down here. So we could test some of these out. Let's go and test out an alternate for this letter I. So I'll come down here and double click on the I and it's pretty much hard to see any difference between the two. Let's try a different letter T. Well, not seeing much difference there either. 
But if you did see a significant difference, then you could replace these characters as we did in Photoshop. Now let's have a look at our swashes, which of course in this font set are in a separate font file. So I'm just going to put a dash in here. I'll select the dash and I'm going to apply that different font to it. So that's the swashes font. So let's just select that. And again, we get access to the glyphs. Now this time I'm going to use some of these slightly darker swashes. Well, I think these are going to work better. So I've got one on the end of my type. Let's go back to the beginning here, put in a dash, format it with the swashes and let's go and find a swash for the beginning. I think this is better. So now this is all a single type element. I can place it anywhere I like in my document. Now shipped with that font were also some doodles. So I'm looking at this dot on the letter I and thinking that I could replace it with a doodle. And there is a small heart doodle here. I think that's going to look pretty cute. So I'll select the heart and copy it. I'm using Control C. You can use Edit Copy should you wish. And I'll use Control V. That would be Command V on the Mac. And again, you can use Edit Paste should you wish just to paste the shape in. And I'll just rotate it a little bit and replace the dot on the eye with the little heart. So that's how you download and install fonts on Windows and a Mac and how you can get access to what's actually inside those fonts in terms of swashes, alternate characters, ligatures and so on in both Illustrator and Photoshop. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.